Hi, I'm Miss Anne, and I'm here to read Pet, The New Year by Kim Lamtran. Illustrated by Mai Vo Din. Hui Li was in a hurry. He was afraid he would be late for his English class, if only he didn't have so much on his mind. Good morning, Hui, Miss Kim said as he took his seat. Since it's January, we were just talking about Pet. Mai was about to tell us her favorite part of the Vietnamese New Year. My whole family got together on New Year's Eve in Vietnam. I stayed up after midnight to make the sweet rice cakes and we all lighted firecrackers. That's what I liked best, Mai said. Then Tan raised his hand. Here in the United States, my family goes to the pet celebration at the high school. They have all the special foods and a dragon dance and everything. Last year, my brother was the dragon's tail. Wait, I changed my mind, interrupted Mai. I forgot about the red envelopes of money that we got at Pet. That's what I liked best. Everyone likes it best. I know the part of Pet I don't like, said Hung. My mother said I have to be nice to everyone, even my little brother. Miss Kim turned to Hui and asked, what about you, Hui? What do you like best about celebrating Pet? Hui shook his head and looked down. He didn't want to think about Pet. It made him miss his mother and everyone in Vietnam they had left behind. It made him worry about his father who was so lonely and so lost in the new country. Hui finally answered, my father says we don't celebrate Pet here. He says, no country, no new year. Lin joined in. Yes, my parents always say Pet isn't the same here, but I remember very little about it. I wonder what Pet was like in Vietnam. Me too, exclaimed the other children. Then the best way to find out is to have a very own Pet celebration, said Miss Kim. On Saturday, let's meet at noon at Lien Yu's Market to buy the supplies. Then we can go to my apartment and celebrate the new year. All the children were excited, all except Hui. He didn't feel much like celebrating anything. His new year wasn't looking too happy either. As he walked home by himself, he heard Tun calling behind him. Hui, let's walk home together. My mom made candied ginger for Miss Kim. Even though it's a special gift for a teacher, I don't think she'd mind if I had a little taste. No thanks, Hui said. Are you coming on Saturday then? No, I don't want to. Besides, my father doesn't go, has, doesn't go to work that day. I should be at home. Well, if you change your mind, I'll be waiting for you in front of my apartment, Tun answered. Saturday came and Tun waited for Hui, but Hui did not show up. Tun, you made it, said Miss Kim when he arrived at the market out of breath. We'd better get on with our shopping. Kim gave everyone a job. Tun, please look for the sweet rice and the mung beans to make rice cakes. Mai, you find some coconut milk and dried watermelon seeds and candied fruit. Lynn, you look for two red candles, three small teacups, and incense. Hung, you choose two nice grapefruit, some mangoes, and a big papaya. I'll get the noodles and the bong mai, the plum blossoms. Then we'll go to the butcher's for the pork and some duck for the soup. When we arrived at Miss Kim's, she said, I've cleaned this place from top to bottom for pet, as I would in Vietnam. Did you know that it is an important New Year's custom? What are those red strips of paper writing with writing on them? Lynn asks. Those are the cow doi, poems written about the yearning for home and family, Miss Kim answered. Now let's set up the altar on this table. Miss Kim put a picture of her grandfather in the middle of the altar. She then placed the by bee, a piece of wood showing his name below it with some coins. Hung, put the fruit next to the coin, please. That means our ancestors will have things they will need in their life after death. I know about the candles, said Mai. They stand for the sun and the moon, and the incense stands for the stars. And I remember the part about praying in front of the altar at midnight, interrupted Lin. We pray for a good year and good health for our family and friends. Right, Miss Kim? Right, Lin and we visit those friends on the third day of our celebration. That's the day 
after you have invited your teacher for a big dinner, she said laughing. This would be a perfect third day of pet if all our friends were here, said Tan. I wish we had come. Well, it's hard for P. This is his first pet away from Vietnam. Some of you know what it's like to be a stranger in a new country, she said. But he isn't a stranger. He's our friend, exclaimed Tan. Wait, I have an idea, Miss Kim said. I think I will give Hui's father a call to invite them to join us. They don't live very far away from here, do they? Miss Kim phoned Hui's father and convinced him to come with his son for the celebration. Tan was so pleased that he quickly put on his coat and ran to Hui's apartment. Hui's father answered the door. Happy New Year, Mr. Lee. I'm so happy that you and Hui are coming to our pet celebration, Tan said breathlessly. When Mr. Lee, Hui, and Tan arrived at Miss Kim's apartment, she opened the door with a smile. Chuk mong nam moi, she said to them. Good wishes to you for the new year. Then she opened the door wider. Behind her, Hui and his father could see the beautiful pet altar, the table laid with a New Year's feast, and around it, a circle of grinning faces. Hui saw his father's look of surprise turn into a shy smile. Please come in and join us, said Mrs. Kim. Friends should be with friends at pet. We will all be together and celebrate a new beginning for a new year. And so they were. The end.